Sean Dicey is in the rehab group today. Yep. How's he tracking 44 days away from the first year? Uh, he's, he's going well. Yeah, he's, um, he's taking steps forward. It's probably been marginally slower than we maybe would have liked, but he's definitely going forward with his rehab. So, yeah, we're fully confident that, yeah, he's on the right path and I um, think early February will join in main training. So, um, yeah, we'll just build towards that. So do you expect that he'll be able to play against West Coast in that first? Well, I haven't probably looked that far ahead, but, you know, we're confident he'll be there around one. Early Feb doesn't give him a big build up from a fitness perspective. What, where's he at from a, just being able to run in games at the moment? Run in games? Yeah, so what, so how, what are you doing in terms of making him fit enough? Well, he's, he's, so when he joins you, he'll be able to be. <clears throat> yeah, he's going through his rehab program. So that encompasses a lot of things, but running is a big part of that and building a fitness base and um, yeah, is a big part of it. And he's slowly bu building um, the change of direction. Um, did a lot of jumping out there today so um yeah he's progressing well so um once he hits training he'll take a little bit of time to get his match fitness up but um yeah we expect him to be really fit by then do you envisage jackson being your number one ruckman for the start of the year and Darcy playing forward until he builds that fitness? no it's not the plan no not that i've got the magnets out for round one just yet but um plan is for sean to be their number one ruck in terms of how do you feel the boys are looking like this time last year, like they came back looking like great gods. They were built. Have you gone and trimmed them down a bit for this year? No, I don't think so. No, we've been, our gym culture is something that we've really pushed again, and we've had a lot of PBs in the gym over the um, pre Christmas period. So, um, yeah, they're, they're running well um, and they're getting stronger. So, trying to build all parts of their um, physical attributes. Um, you know, different roles encompass different uh, those different at attributes. Um, but yeah, really happy with where they are with their running point of view. But our gym has been really strong as well. So um, even though they might look a little bit leaner and some might take offence to that, but they're actually stronger as well as what they were last year. Matt, what's, where is the his progression at the moment? Uh, well, he's tracking really well. Um, yeah, pre-Christmas he got into our match sim. So we're expecting him to do a bit of match sim when we start that up um, yeah, and build into, into full training. Likelihood is he probably won't ever get to full loads, but um, yeah, we'll try and max out his loads um, yeah, not too deep near future. So he'll be yeah, doing a lot of, lot of the main training and he's building really well. So when does that match sim, when do you get to that? Like, how, how far away is the whole? Two days. Oh, two days. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so it's going to come around pretty quick. And um, yeah, whether he's in it on Saturday or, or Monday, or, yeah, we'll wait and see. But yeah, he, he um, hasn't lost anything over Christmas. Um, yeah, and he's raring to go. Where do you see him playing this season? Well, we'll, we'll we think midfield. So we'll, we'll get into this conversation every year with Nat and really just want to publicly, publicly especially, just let him go about his business and not put too much expectation on him and not say he's, he's you know, locked down here to play because it just sets it sets us up. And well, I just want to make sure that he's in a real comfortable position to be able to um, maximise each day um, and, and, and focus on getting his body and his game right. Because um, if he does that, we'll be able to use him wherever we need to use him. But um, he's upskilling himself mainly in the midfield at the moment. Um, but we'd like to build in a bit of a secondary role for that, which is you know, clearly down forward. So... Haven't worked on the splits um, yet, but it'll be yeah, mainly mid. So having his size, it's basically high and in width, um, in, in that midfield, do you think that will give you? Yeah, we, we think it complements the other guys well. Um, you know, Hayden Young went into the midfield late last year and gave us another bigger body in there as well, which um, complemented the other mids. So I um, feel like we've got, we're starting to build some real depth through the middle of the ground with Rasmus and Johnson taking another step forward. Um, yeah, John, uh, as I said, Youngie's moved in there. Um, you know, Will Brody, Fifey, going to be, and, and Jags banging the door down for an opportunity as well. So, feel like there's really good competition for spots. His ability to string games together is <coughs> a problem for his body. Do you yeah. envisage trying to manage him through a season? We shouldn't be expecting him to be a 20 game a year player anymore. Or maybe, maybe I'd love to get to that stage. Um, yeah, we well, just got to get his body right at the moment. Um, get him ready for. You know, to build the match sim and get the minutes into him and then 
um, you know, if he can hit round one, you know, really fit, um, you know, we can work out a plan from there, but just one step at a time. Another one, another one who struggled with injury the last year or so is Matt Tabernet, but he looked like he was moving really well there. How is his back and, and I guess similar, <coughs> similar questions for him around, uh, as for Fife. Yeah. Like how much do you see him playing? What role does he have? Oh, yeah, he'll play the same role as he's, he's always played for us. And, um, yeah, we really missed him last year, Tabs. So um, it'd be nice to have him um, fit, available, in good form. He's done a power of work. Um, prior to Christmas, he, he very rarely missed a training drill pre-Christmas. Um, yeah, he's got to take a little bit of time to get his form and his, his running patterns and leading patterns um, up to the standard that they've been up up to previously just because he's missed a lot of footy. But, um, you know, added him to, you know, Luke Jackson and um, Josh Tracy, Jaya Miss um, and a few others. We're starting to, you know, had, have some competition for spots with our tall forwards as well. So... Um, you know, Tabs is a proven, reliable, um, tall forward. He's um, been able to hit the scoreboard for us and um, play some really good footy for us. So, yeah, we see him as, yeah, he's going to push really hard for a spot in the team. And um, he's done a, done a mountain of work to get to where he is at the moment. So it's all positive for Tabs. Are you, have you got closer in your own head having a front runner for the wing and Lockie, and Lockie Schultz position? No, not really. Not really on the wings. Um, yeah, I like to I like to have an open mindset with these things because um, you know until you get to the games, um, yeah, it's, it's hard to judge. So um, I had a really open mind. Uh, like I've said about you know the previous roles, we've got some good competition for spots. Um, Chappie's been up on the wing training as a wingman. Um, Sharpie's obviously come to the club and is um, you know, running really well and, and training. Yeah, I'm really well executing really well. So um, add to Driz and Ethan Stanley and a number of guys that um, flicked out to the wing last year. We feel like yeah, we've got some good competition at the moment. Um, yeah, so I'm really open mind. Um, not one part of me settled on our 18 or 22 for round one. It's um, yeah, all, all spots are up for grabs. Touch on Chapman moving uh, up into the midfield group mm. off the back of Hayden Young and moving into the midfield group. What does the back line look like? Yeah, well, the reason why we've been able to do it is because we feel like we've got good depth through the back line. Um, yeah, and it's, it was uh, yeah, it was a good discussion with the back line midfield coach around making sure we don't rob Peter to pay Paul. But, um, you know, Chappie missed a lot of footy last year, so he wasn't really a part of our back line last year. Um, then we feel at any stage we, we do feel a little bit light on. They've, got, they've built the skill set and the understanding to be able to be, able to flick, be flicked back um, at any moment. So, um, yeah, it's a bit of a balancing act, but we really want to get the midfield right. So, um, there was a, yeah, so we we'll feel like we've got the balance right, but, um, yeah, I'm not saying it's forever. There's been a bit of change in the back of house as well with uh, Joey taking on mm. his new role. How's it going working with him and is it different to working with Bell? Oh, it's always a little bit different. Yeah, they've both got the different styles. But yeah, I feel like Joey's um, stepped into the role really well. Um, yeah, he's been a great support for me um, in, in the first couple of months of being in that role. And from what I can see, Belly's yeah, stepped um, into his new role really well as well and is having a really good impact um, on that on that side of it, so I feel like we've got um, yeah all the pieces in place, and now we just got to get to work. Now the train ons going, and talk to Dan McKenzie's uh, about to join you. Yeah, so Dan's going to come over and um, yeah join in that that competition for spots um, in the SSP. So yeah, I feel like the the guys that have been training have been applying themselves really well. Um, yeah, they're really hungry, um, really keen to learn. Um, yeah, and they've um, embraced the opportunity of great intensity. So, um, yeah, it's not the ideal uh, not the ideal um, way to go about it for those those four. But yeah, they're going to fight for a spot, and they um, yeah, we feel like um, with the four guys that being able to get a decent spread of, of the field, and we'll be able to pick it on a needs basis if. Um, it comes to that in Feb. Do you feel like you definitely had <coughs> prior to the season? Well, we'll work that out. Um, we've got two spots available. Whether we use those two, we'll make a decision, yeah, closer to the date. 
um, yeah, you know, obviously the possibility of leaving one spot open for mid-season. So there's a number of different things we'll, we'll go through. Contract year for you, how does that change your mind process going through? Well, it doesn't change at all. Like, um, you know, there's always, a, there's always senior coaches out of contract and I'm one of those this year. Um, yeah, I'll put that in the, in the background of my mind and really focused about making sure to help set the players up for success and, and the club up for success. Um, I'm really, yeah, focused on the now and really excited about um, the way the players are training, applying themselves, embracing the work. And yeah, I've spent four years telling the players to live in the moment. Um, it's my, t- my time to, to live that and not worry about that because you know the outcomes look after themselves. So that's where I'm at at the moment. So, and with outcomes, you think you have to make finals to get extended, or is it not? Is that- uh, I'll, I'll continue that dialogue with Simon. He'll, he'll talk to the board about those types of things. Um, yeah, well, what, what we need to do as a football club is take a step forward. Um, you know, a lot was made of last year. Um, success isn't always linear. Um, there's a lot of learnings and lessons and um, things that all that we that we took from last year that'll hold us in really good stead for where we're going as a football club. So, um, yeah, we need to put those things into practice and make sure that next year we're a much more consistent football team. Um, because last year I think our, our best footy was was really strong, but nowhere near as consistent as it needs to be. It was often said last year. A bit like some teams have taken a couple of steps back to move forward. Do you feel now that season's over and you've seen this pre-season that that might actually be the case? Those steps backwards will be beneficial this year? Oh, well, that's the that's plan. Um, and that's what we're working towards. And, um, yeah, it doesn't just happen, though, does it? So you need to make sure you, you, you learn from it, you put the right um, program systems in place to be able to um, learn from the lessons from last year and... Um, yeah, and attack it the right way. Sometimes after a, a season where you take a step back, you can lose a little bit of belief, but I haven't seen that from the playing group. Um, I see a real hunger. Um, and I see, yeah, great intensity to approach everything that we're doing in the right way. So um, it's all positive so far, but I think the other 17 clubs would be saying the same thing.